Finally, I'd like to return to George Herbert and what has to be one of the finest poems in the English language. George Herbert is only marginally Welsh. He's fifth son of an eminent Welsh family. Uh, in researching, doing research for this lecture, I found out, um, which I did not know, that his mother, uh, Magdalen Newport, uh, was, uh, as it were, a, pa a, a patron of the arts and of poets. Um, and if, if you don't know this, this is going to come as a shock. So, John Dunn dedicated his holy sonnets to George Herbert's mother. <laughs> so, when I found that out, the collie that was sleeping at my feet jumped. <laughs> because it was clear that something major had happened. <laughs> Um, so, so Herbert at 10 actually left uh, for Westminster School and then had a scholarship to Trinity College and, and uh, in Cambridge and then spent much of his life as an Anglican rector at Bemerton near Salisbury. Um, so Exalted Terra, which was premiered last night, is a setting of three Herbert poems. You have them on a sheet of some color. Ah, oh, pink. You have them on the pink sheet. OK. Um, they're each of the, I selected these poems uh, because they each have a conceit. As you can see, the, e the end lines in the first poem, Paradise, are successively pruned. So grow becomes row becomes o and so on. And then uh, in the second poem, my life is hid in him that is my treasure, is fed through the poem. And I thought it would be a lovely thing to do with a choir. And then the last poem, heaven, is one of those echo poems and it turns out that Monteverdi's echo poem from the 1610 Vespers also has, one, has something like this. And so Herbert might have known of that and then uh, wrote this poem. Um, I've loved the first poem. Uh, and uh, I this is the second time I said it. Um, the, uh, the title, Paradise, uh, gave me pause initially. I don't usually title things like paradise. But then I looked it up and then I found out, and again, this is one of those moments, I found out that paradise means para is around. The paradise is a walled garden. <laughs> and so, so like the one around the Taj Mahal. So I could suddenly use this poem, and I could use this I could use this title, whereas I thought I'd have to find a different title for it to be part of my of what I do. Okay, um, <clears throat> I originally set Paradise for the Gr the Gruganog Festival, which uh, takes place in Wales, which takes place in Montgomery, which is said to be Herbert's birthplace. There's um, a little problem with pruned words. When you prune the words, of course, you're cutting them shorter. And in music, you want things to go to be longer. And so um, uh, I solved that problem because I decided that uh, pruning something let in more light. And so in my setting, in the setting that you hear now, which is not the setting from, from last night, um, you'll see that there are sort of three tree shapes at the beginning, which are quite full. Then we go into the poem. And then at the end, the tree shapes are kind of hollowed out into be -a -da, da -de -a -da, something that you'll recognize. So especially uh, Nikki and, and Sylvie, 
and, and our audience member from last night uh, will recognize, and I, I've, I had permission from Gregonog, that, um, that the first uh, movement of Exalted draws quite heavily on this paradise. So if we may have the words first, and uh, uh, Barbara is going to um, give the poem to you. And then uh, I'll, we'll finish with, play, with a performance by Tenebrae. Um, it's, a gr it's, a, it's a very fine performance, and it's a laptop recording. But I just decided you'd like to hear that. And then we'll finish with that. So here's Paradise, George Herbert. I bless thee, Lord, because I grow among the trees, which in a row to thee both fruit and order owe. What open force or hidden charm can blast my fruit, or bring me harm while the enclosure in thine arm? Enclose me still for fear I start, be to me rather sharp and tart, than let me want thy hand and art. When thou dost greater judgment spare, and with thy knife but prune and pear, even fruitful trees more fruitful are. Such sharpness shows the sweetest friend, such cuttings rather heal than rend, and such beginnings touch their end. 